Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Hello, this is the Hot Topic Show. What do we do? We won't judge, but we're judging. It's going to be juicy. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topic. You had a productive weekend. I uh, went to the club, went to the grocery store, and went to pottery. Oh, oh I like a pottery class. Oh. oh, sure, I'm all Demi Moore in Ghost. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes. I didn't watch the Super Bowl. Oh. Oops, I mean the big bowl. <laughs> the big game. You can say it. Yep. <laughs> Clap if you didn't watch. <laughs> you very patriotic. <laughs> Do you know that the Patriots won? Yes. Do you know that it was, war like, I'm not even a sports person, but the game sounded so exciting when they were doing the recaps on the news. I was like, wow. So people actually left Super Bowl parties and left the stadium at halftime because they thought the Falcons were gonna win. <laughs> In the meantime, the Patriots came from nowhere and won. <laughs> and Giselle is married to the MVP five-time Super Bowl champ? Wow. It's good. It's good, the kids were there. His mom hadn't been to a game in ages and cause she's been very sick, sick for the last 18 months. Mrs. Brady showed up and then her three grandchildren of course were there and Giselle was there and Giselle was not in fancy clothes. You know, I like, I like that she was in, you know, I mean, you know, her man is still, whether they won or lost, her man is still the man of that team. Yeah. So there are a lot of women, I think, fashionably speaking, who would have played it differently, like gone in the highest heel and the most <laughs> extravagant Saint Laurent, you know, <laughs> perfectly coiffed hair. But she did it beachy. It looked like she was wearing like a denim shirt, something like real regular. I like it. Good, good for her. You know. And, and Tom, Tom is 59 years old and he says he has no intent on retiring anytime soon. Though He says the way his body is conditioned right now, he could play for several more years. Wow. He's 39. Thir what'd I say? You said, you said 50, 59. Oh, I'm sorry, 39. <laughs> 39, you know what I mean. Anyway, he's old. To be getting knocked around, but if he thinks he can do it, then go ahead and do it. Lady Gaga did it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't watch halftime either. <laughs> Clap if you missed the halftime. Suzanne, did you watch? Yeah, I just watched halftime. That's it. How do you know when to get there? Because this is my thing. Uh huh. You know, I don't know what time halftime is. If I knew it happened at 8.45, I would have turned on the TV at 8.45. But apparently, you know, there's no halftime until there's all kinds of stops and end zones and, uh -huh. and backups and stuff. And so I don't have time for that. <laughs> I could ask Norman, somebody from the bureau could have called me and told me though, I but. 
I'm, thank you. You don't want to watch. Okay, thank you. Right. Did you have a Super Bowl party? I went to a Super Bowl party. Mm -hmm. It was fun. It was lit, as the kids say. Yeah, yeah it was lit. <laughs> Did you watch the actual game or were you just there for Gaga? I, I, I came for Gaga, but I stayed for the game. Okay. <laughs> well, Gaga performed. She descended from the roof like, um, like Pink or like um, Peter Pan. <laughs> and I thought she looked great. When I woke up this morning, because I told you I didn't watch any of it, and it turns out it was over in time for the 10 o'clock news, which is what I liked about the Super Bowl. I, I thought for some reason the Super Bowl went to like two o'clock in the morning. Why do I? And kind of comes on at like six o'clock or like nine o'clock at night, not six. Anyway, look, people are making fun of uh, her stomach. For what? Gaga, Gaga has lost, um, I don't know how much weight, but I would say about 20, 25 pounds since the last time we saw her actually perform. You know she goes up and down with the weight. She likes the food, her parents, she bought them a beautiful Italian restaurant. So if your parents had a restaurant, wouldn't you? It, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, holy cannoli. Plus, you know, it hasn't, been, it hasn't been an easy time for her recently. You know, she and her man are no longer together and she's trying to navigate her way through dating. And remember, that wasn't just her man, that was the, they were engaged and she had that beautiful heart-shaped ring and, you know, she's living in the public eye. Well, so she performed, I thought that she looked great. People are already talking about who's going to perform next year. By the way, at the end of her performance, she did announce that she's going on world tour. So she's about to be on world tour. Yeah. yeah. And no, I didn't see the performance, like I said, but you know, people who did see it, everybody said, well, she's no Beyonce, well, she's no Madonna. And I'm like, no, she's Gaga. And it's a whole different type of performance. Like, stop comparing them. As far as who should perform for next year, people are already uh, weighing in. Kim uh, Kardashian weigh West weighed in and uh, she wants Kanye to perform next year. I think that this is a terrible idea. I think that Kanye is a loose cannon and you don't know whether he'd show up or not, and when he shows up, what he's going to do. I mean, I like the idea that Gaga didn't make a political statement except for, you know, the, um, what song did she do in the very beginning? America the Beautiful. America the Beautiful. That was statement enough without talking politics. But you know, if you give Kanye a microphone <laughs> on live TV for 15 minutes, mm -mm. Anyway, so Kim, no Kanye. Unless, you know, unless maybe he brought a few of his famous friends and there could be somebody that, um, that, that pulls him off stage, you know, if, when things go awry. <laughs> and then, um, and Kanye's never performed at the Super Bowl and neither has Rihanna. How about Rihanna for next year? <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> you know, as the world has become undone, I have uh, totally changed my position on Rihanna, who I never, I always liked Rihanna's music and stuff, but I always had difficulty with the way Rihanna conducts herself regarding, you know, how she dresses and, you know, what, you know, I don't know, in regular life. But I've given up. The world is coming undone. This girl is living her life. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 really, I like her. She's not hurting anybody. She makes good music. She gives great fashion. She j lives her life like nobody's watching. And that's what maybe all of us need to take a cue from that. <laughs> um, so I would like to see Rihanna at the Super Bowl and I don't think that she needs to go up there with anybody. We thought that Gaga was gonna bring Beyonce. Well, you thought Gaga was gonna bring Beyonce. I told her through the TV, don't do it. Even Beyonce not being pregnant with twins would still upstage a Gaga. Yes. But Beyonce pregnant with twins? Don't do it. That, that is an absolute upstage ya. She gonna upstage ya. Yeah. So, um, but I think that Rihanna can do it without bringing anybody. There's some people that don't need plus ones. If you do it fabulous enough, like I think Janet Jackson would be really good next year at the Super Bowl yes. by herself. You know, come
determined to reclaim what was taken from her. My problem is the only kind of ja Janet that I want to see, because I'm so conditioned, is the old Janet who knows how to tip the chair with her feet. But, but she might not necessarily be able to move like that anymore, or, or maybe she wouldn't have lost all of her weight or whatever, so we don't know what we're going to get. But Janet would be great. I think Jennifer Lopez, who's never performed at the Super Bowl, would be fantastic. So. Um, by the way, Beyonce will be performing at the Grammys on Sunday night. Oh, oh, oh. Do you know how I know? How? Her father, Matthew, spilled the beans on the insider. He didn't mean to do it though. This is just the dad talking. Matthew said that he called his daughter after he had heard through the grapevine that she was pregnant. <laughs> That's the only way that her dad found out that she was pregnant, like through the grapevine. But in addition to um, the pregnancy revelation, he also spills the beans about the Grammys. And if you take a look at how he's delivering, he didn't mean to do it, but he did it. And then we'll talk, go ahead. You called her? Yes. What'd you say? I was like, she was like, hi dad. I was like, you are okay? Cause she sounded like a little tired cause she's been working, uh, you know, working on the Grammy performance. And so this might be why she didn't tell Matthew that she was pregnant. It might not have anything to do with the strain in their relationship, but more like, you know, you know the big mouth members of your family. People that you can't tell anything to until the baby's head is crowned in. You know, you know what I mean? You know, like you can't, you can't. Oh my gosh, so in conclusion, yeah, she will be performing at the Grammys. Um, in other Beyonce news, she's still planning on performing at Coachella, which you know is that big um, hippie uh, music festival that looks so fun. <laughs> it's like 100 degrees and sweltering. Everybody smokes weed. <laughs> uh, oh, please, everybody smokes weed <laughs> and, and wears either cage boots, you know, the, the boots that, that are like, like what? I can, I can never understand a cage boot. Like, what is that? Is it a boot or is it a, a shoe? You know, the cage thing. Anyway, and flowers in their hair, and everyone looks dirty. <laughs> like, like Woodstock, like, like, like it looks fun. But whether she performs or not, they're planning on giving her her $1 million fee. So if I were her, I wouldn't go. <laughs> like, then, then why go? I mean, it's not like she needs the publicity. If she needed the publicity, I would say go. But Beyonce pregnant, that is the gift that's gonna keep on giving publicity-wise for quite a moment. She, um, she uh, might perform at Coachella, though. There were a few cynics in our Hot Topics meeting who believe that Beyonce is a greedy fame whore. Who, 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 not, not Norman. No, it was not me. <laughs> who? would show up just to show you that she's, the, you know, like in other words, loves the fame so much that she would show up anyway. I say Beyonce, relax, you got that. Listen, by April, you're gonna be like big like this. We don't want anything going wrong with you and the kids. Although if you did show up, only one song. <laughs> and I would say it should be crazy in love. I'm gonna tell you why. Because being pregnant and you don't have to do the uh-oh or anything. You have some shirtless men bring you out on like a chair and then Jay-Z comes and he, and he leans on it cool like and does his part and then they leave the building and you collect your million dollars and you go with Blue Ivy and you go back home. Whether she shows up or not, in, in, in their own way, the babies have really uh, re-energized her career. I think, I think. Blue Ivy's five years old. She's about, she's about to launch her own uh, uh, clothing line. <laughs> so she's busy. You know, she, she's got board meetings and things like that. Uh, the line is gonna include hair care, clothing, mobile devices, and video games. I think this is an excellent idea. 
There were people in the Hot Topics meeting who were like, um, Jay-Z and Beyonce don't need the money. Blue Ivy doesn't need the money. Why are they doing this? Why, why are they exploiting the little girl? I said, because Beyonce's mom owned a hair salon and she comes from hairdresser roots. Beyonce's grandmother was Darion. You know, they, they're all good with that sewing machine. You know, and doing stuff. So there was a clothing background. And as far as um, mobile devices, I mean, that's just a natural thing, you know? Moms would be coming home saying, look at my daughter. She just got a blue ivy perm. <laughs> Doesn't she look pretty? <laughs> um, I don't mind this at all. Uh, but I just don't wanna see Blue Ivy in the commercials or the ads or on the mobile device as you know, you know, a cartoon character. I don't wanna see Blue Ivy be a part of it. I just wanna know that she's collecting the money off of something that is authentically true to the family, which is hair care and you know, beauty stuff and stuff and stuff. I'll tell you what though, that's a cute little girl. If I had a daughter, I would want that to be in the Blue Ivy line and get it for her. I mean, at a, less, uh, at a lesser price. I'm sure that's like a Givenchy or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, good luck, uh, Beyonce and um, you all. <laughs> so, you know the um, shoe designer, <clears throat> Giuseppe Zanotti? Expensive shoes, 600, 800, couple thousand bucks. That's him, okay. He and Nicki Minaj are warring and Nicki is claiming that Giuseppe has been using her name on his sneakers for years to the tune of their like over 20 pair of sneakers that he has put out and called them the Nicki. Just the Nicki, not Minaj, but the Nicki, spelling it the same way Nicki spells her name. And when she reached out to him recently about possibly doing a collaboration together, cause I guess they've never collaborated, but you know, he, anyway, he didn't return her calls. Oh. Well, I don't know how many times she called. I don't know whether it was her calling him personally or whether it was her publicity firm calling or what, but she did post on her social media, dear, uh, dear Giuseppe Zanotti Design, run me my check. Your PR <laughs> must have fell and bumped their head <laughs> when they told my agency they weren't discussing anything with us. I'm giving you 24 hours. Whoa. You know what, she does have a point. Yeah. You know, I mean, if, if, uh, Giuseppe, if you've been using Nikki's name and you know, and you know, your relationship with her, um, and, in, in, and putting it on, oh, by the way, he then, after he read her post, dropped all the Nickies from his website. Oh. So that was his way of answering, but not answering directly. So Nikki thinks it's a race thing. I don't know that this is a race thing, although it's very, very difficult, um, you know, it's very difficult to decipher what's race and what's not, but sometimes you just feel it in your bone. I don't feel this in my bone. What I feel is, is that um, maybe this is an attitude thing, Nikki. Nikki, everybody knows you have a reputation for being very difficult to work with. And maybe, maybe the headaches that you give people are not worth working with you. You know, I, and, I know that he's collaborated with Jennifer Lopez and done sneakers and you know shoes and things like that, but there's something about your reputation, Nikki, that, that has followed you almost since your career got started and doesn't seem to be getting any better. And that maybe is why you're not um, in the new Ocean's 8 movie. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, they, they asked her. Oh wait, no, they didn't ask her. Uh -huh. They her, got Rihanna. Her name, her name showed up in a meeting. Right. And it was like, and they called Rihanna and the rest is history. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal took a picture at the Super Bowl and it's gone viral. 
he's seven feet one, and Olympic gymnast <laughs> Simone Biles is only four feet nine. Now, you know what I say when I look at this picture? These are two people sick and tired of you all um, height, um, height questioning, questioning them. Take this picture. I've been like, nope, I'm not, nope, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> Shaq, aren't you tired of this? <laughs> yup, I'm tired of it. Let's not do it. <laughs> and this was at the Super Bowl. He's really well put together. Was he commentating? No. No, so. he wasn't? I don't think so. Mm. Anyway, cute picture. Let that be the last one you all take. I, 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 like, I, I, you, you can imagine being so tall. It's like a freak show or so short, like a freak show every time you leave the house, which is ridiculous. Alrighty, everybody. Anyway, it is time for Wendy's Tropical Punch Giveaway. Hit it! She was flying over some tropical islands when she disappeared. But, but I've been found! Perfect. All right, let's get today's caller on the line. That's a good one. The first Hello. luggage I ever had was Amelia Earhart luggage. Remember that? Hi, um, Monica in Texas. Is this you in Rockwall? Yes. Hi, it's Wendy and Suzanne. Wow. How you doing? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. Yes, okay, so Monica, you're our contestant on today's Wendy's Tropical Punch giveaway. Have you been watching our show every single day on KFDW? Yes, of course. Perfect, all right, let's find out what you're playing for. Pick a number between one and 20. Um, 15. 15, all right, Suzanne. Okay, Nobody 15? said number seven yet. No, maybe tomorrow. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, drum roll, please. What's behind number 15? What's behind number 15? There you go. Five thousand bucks. Love Whoa. it, Monica. Whoa. Listen, yeah. listen closely. There's five thousand bucks on the line. But you're only gonna have fifteen seconds to answer correctly, okay? Okay. All right. Um, on Friday during Hot Topics, we talked about fans complaining about a famous singer showing up late to a concert. Name the singer. Fifteen seconds and go. Lauren Hill. Yes. Enjoy spending that 5,000 bucks, Monica, bye-bye. If you want to be a winner like Monica in Wendy's Tropical Punch giveaway, log on to my Facebook page to enter and make sure that you watch our show every day because we might be calling you next. In the meantime, we've got more great show. We've got the hottest beauty products at unbelievable discounts. But up next, it's the inside scoop on a bunch of stuff, including Frank Ocean being sued by his father. Oh. Keep it here.